Hi everyone, welcome to uh, another video. This one's again on Retrobat, um, especially a follow-up to a video I did recently around the installation. Uh, one of the comments was asking whether I could show uh, how to install some of the additional emulators, because um, obviously some of the basic uh, some of the basic ones come with it, but some of the more advanced ones um, um, don't come packaged, because you can imagine if they're all packaged together, it may make it quite a large download. So um, a lot of them are downloaded on demand. So basically when you can add a game for that system or um, you want to go in and manually add the emulator, it'll prompt you to download it. It'll download the latest version for you uh, and, in, and install. So what I was going to do, also I can't show every single one because there's has, it has quite a few in there. So I'm just going to pick a couple of the, uh, I guess the, the main popular ones. So we'll do Semu, the Wii U, uh, and then we'll do some, uh, PS2 and uh, PS3. So uh, hopefully give an idea of um, how to do it. It's, it's the same for, for most of them. Um, so yeah, let's let's crack on. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it kind of like on the fly. Uh, it's how I like to do most of my videos, just kind of not not too pre-planned. So if I run into any issues, uh, you can see them, and if it's an issue you run into, you can hopefully see how to sort it out. So uh, anything I've really done in advance is grab got some games together, and I've got the the download uh, for the installation. Also, yeah, as previously mentioned or previously shown in the other other guides, if you um, if you do a Google search quickly, it says this for Retrobat. Uh, the first hit in Google is still uh, the old site, uh, Retrobat.org. Now is the newer site. Yeah, so hit download, and then once you go here, you can download the latest version. Um, there's um, some updates here, there's a patch if you've got a previous version, you might update, etc. But yeah, just basically go ahead and grab the latest version from here. Like I say, I've already got that in my downloads folder. So, oh, having said that, I think 5.1.1 is out now. Um, but I should just be putting a couple of couple of fixes. So we'll we'll stick with this version. So to whiz through the install quickly, uh, I'm going to stick it uh, on my X drive folder called Demo, which is where I've put some of the games and other bits and pieces. Let me just double check that. So on my X drive, yeah, Demo, uh, launch box and the, the video I did the other day. And also, like I said, I've got some games together all ready to use for this demonstration. So yeah, let's put it back into so X Retrobat and do install. And you should see, yeah, it's created the folder already. And start to put bits and pieces in. You can always click on show details if you're if you're interested. This it basically shows all the files that it's uh, extracting. So let that run through. Um, what I've done actually, uh, rather than pausing the video or anything, um, like I say, yeah, so in, in with the games, I've got a BIOS folder. So in here is some, um, some of the systems need BIOS files, not all of them, but some of them. Um, I'm pretty sure I left in my, uh, one of my other videos a link to where you can get a, a full retro back BIOS pack to cover everything you need. Um, I'll put it in the link in the description here as well. You can download that and basically extract it into your uh, within Retrobat, there'll be a. Um, I don't know if it's done it yet. Yeah, in the root, this, this is BIOS folder, and you basically download this pack and dump everything in there, and that will give you the, all the BIOS files you need. Um, but like I said, I'll, I'll just grab a couple I know we need for this and put in here. Uh, one important one is one for the, for the PS3. Um, you don't don't need a BIOS as such, but it's the it's the PlayStation firmware. Um, but it's not a problem getting that. You can get that directly from the PlayStation website. So if we just do a uh, PlayStation the update. Yeah, so PlayStation website. 4.89 is the latest version. Click here to download it. Um, and you can see just the bottom of the screen there, it downloads it as a uh, PS3 update.pup. And that's the file I have here. See, it's roughly 200 meg. So, for, to set up PS3, you'll need that. So, worth grabbing that. 
Uh, and let's see, this is still going. So let me just pause quickly while this gets to the end. Okay, so we're at the end now. Got the option to create a desktop shortcut. I'm just going to take that for now. Right, so that's it, basically finished. So we have a look in our demo folder. We've got RetroBat. Um, one thing I'm going to do, again as I did in the other video, was make sure this doesn't start full screen because um, I've found out before my uh, my screen recording software doesn't like it running run sort of full screen apps. So this um, this back GUI .exe is a way of allowing you to configure some of the settings within uh, with RetroBat. So we're going to the main one here, and I just want it to run at 1280. 720 hit save now save it to a little config file or any file and now we can close this close this now when we run retro back for the first time it should run in a small window for us so we can see it easy and there we go so fresh install of um, RetroBat. So you'll see here you've got sort of standard categories. Uh, and under the RetroBat menu is where you see all the different emulators. So again, as I mentioned before, um, you can come through here and pick ones you want. And if they're ones that aren't installed by default, it'll prompt you saying it's not there, do you want to download it? And say yes. And just seeing the notification at the top here, so 5.11 is available, so we can update that through here if we wish to but I won't at the moment um, so yeah so you have to go through here and kind of pre-install and, and load the, the emulators the other way around of doing it is adding some games in the retro bat and then the first time you try to launch a game at that point it'll then prompt you say this emulator isn't installed do you want to install it now say yes but it's it's easy to do it ahead of time so like I say let's do semu for, for Wii U so we just go to launch this and it should tell me, yep, not installed. <clears throat> it's running full screen, so hopefully you can see it okay. It's just going to download it for us. And then because we're not actually launching the game, we're just launching the emulator. It just, just runs it up for us here. So this is where, once we've got it run up here, this is where we can um, do things like um, set any config that we need to in here. Uh, so I think like input settings, we can set up the controller. Um, also, I haven't got my controller connected. I'll try and do that quickly, actually, make sure it all shows up. Just make sure it is actually connected. Let's check on Bluetooth. Uh, so I have got an Xbox One wireless controller. Um, I think I've actually synced it to a different device since using it here last, so let me just resync it. I'll basically, yeah, basically remove it and uh, re add it. Oh, remove power, that's handy. Right, so let's just do a quick scan for Bluetooth. I've got the uh, put in pairing mode, there it is. Connected, excellent. Right, so that's now connected. So I don't know. I need to restart this to pick it up. I might need to. So let's just close this. So that's actually semu installed. Uh, I'll worry about the controller in a minute. Um, and then. What I'll, do, I'll add a couple of emulators and then I'll come back and we'll add some games and make sure everything runs. So let's uh, let's add uh, PCSX2, the PS2. Again, same thing, it's not installed. Do you want to install it? It'll go and grab the latest version for you. Starts up here. So there's no game at the moment. We're going to add the games afterwards. So um, there's all bits in here again around controllers. 
But what, what I'll do, I'll, I'll quickly try these as well to, to see whether, because uh, some of the systems in here are going to be um, going to be pre-configured, and we don't we, you know don't need to necessarily man set the control up manually. So we'll uh, we'll basically leave it and just make sure it all works. So that's that. That one installed, and then lastly for this demo, let's do PS3. Okay, so downloading. <clears throat> okay, so that's launched. Like I say, PS3 is the one where you need the um, PlayStation firmware. So what we'll do is go to install firmware and we we'll browse to the folder that we're working from, the demo folder. Under games and BIOS, there's the uh, PlayStation update file we talked about. Let's just install that, copy it across, and then it goes to full screen. Let me just resize that. I hope you can see that. Uh, it does this PC around compiling some some modules. So this is just a, a one-time thing. So what I'll do, I'll just quickly pause. It might just it's going to take a couple of minutes just to compile these. <clears throat> okay, those those are done. So now, see, we're pretty much ready to go. Uh, again, in here, you've got some config around uh, things like uh, the, the CPU, the graphics, resolution, all that kind of stuff uh, that you can change. Uh, feel free to play in there, but I'll just recommend leaving it as default. <clears throat> One thing I will do is on the emulator is untick the box to start full screen. Also, you probably want this, but for the demo, I'm going to untick this because it's easy to see the game running in a window for me rather than full screen. So I just change that. And also, again, in here, you've got the option to set up your, uh, your controls. Um, so for X input, see it's got pad one, which is the Xbox controller. Uh, and we can just see this in here. Um, if I do things like do up, press up on the uh, on the controller, and you can map all the buttons. But everything should be pretty much um, good to go. So L1 is left bumper. Yeah, see, that's that's right. And then left trigger. Yeah, left trigger. So that's all. Um, should be ready to go. Shouldn't change anything in there. Um, let's cancel that there. So that's the basic part of uh, the PlayStation 3 stuff done. So we'll just close that. Actually, while I'm in here, I'll just I will show a game running um, because to add them into the actual um, RetroBat menu, it's slightly different. And there's a there's a guide for that. So because all the games for PS3, you've got two different um, I guess formats. You've got um, you can download the games in in package format. So they come in a .dot uh, pk pkg file, <clears throat> which are basically games that. On the PlayStation 3, you download from the store. They're kind of like the online version of the game, download version. So you'll get the, P the package file, um, browse to it, and say, you know, or click on install package, browse to it, and, and install it, and it will copy it as if it was installing it to the PlayStation 3 in the actual emulator folder. There's a, um, so I'll go to emulator now and find our PS3. So it's got, it's got things, um, so like dev HD0 is almost like it's like a virtual hard drive that will exist in, in the PS3. So if you click install, it will install it into the uh, into the game folder here. This is where your games would, would appear, as if they were installing. Uh, the other method, other format is to actually um, have games in kind of folder format, which is what I've got for my demo game. So we go in here, we've got Afterburner. So this is kind of the format. This is kind of what would be on a on a physical disc of the game, if it's been extract, extracted off. So what we'll do is just take this, and I will just copy this into. So within RetroBat, <clears throat> all the games are stored in a ROMs folder, <clears throat> and it has all these files and folders, so these folders pre-configured for you. So there'll be a a folder, empty folder, ready for PS3. So we go here, and we'll just paste that in there. 
And then with some of these systems, it's similar for the Wii U as well. Um, it uses an M3U file, which is basically, <clears throat> if you're playing an M3, it's basically a, like a playlist, playlist file. Um, so this is an example they give, and you basically within here just point it to the, um, uh, to the, uh, I guess the installation folder of the game. So again, like I mentioned uh, a minute ago, the, uh, the actual game there is on, on the hard drive, and then this will be a, a game ID unique to the game. And then the, the eboot.bin will be the bootable file to start the game. But we'll go through that in a minute. So here we have the uh, <coughs> of the game here. So now what we can do for the emulator is say add games, put it where to look. So we're gonna look at our ROMs. PS3 folder, off the burner, select the folder, and there you go, it is added. So now, in theory, we can double click this to launch. And there you go, it starts to launch. And again, it's, it's compiling these PPU menus, so the modules, sorry. So these are kind of like patches for the games. And again, this is a this is a one-time thing. It should be quite quick, hopefully, with any luck. So we're getting to the point now where we've got the emulator installed and configured. We're ad adding a game in. Once we check this works, the next step is just to add it into Retrobat itself to make it make it visible in the list so you can pick it. Of course, here we're, we're doing it quite manually. We're opening up the emulator manually, double clicking the, the game, which you know is fine. But the whole like, <clears throat> whole reason is to go through Retrobat as, as a nice front end con controlled. With the with the gamepad, so we'll get that bit sorted out in a second. And now the game launches. So happy that's working okay. And you'll see slightly at the bottom you know, the compiling shaders. So whenever a new scene launches that's not launched before, it'll compile the shaders for it. And again, that's a one-time thing. So maybe the first time you play a game, it might be a little bit slow because it's um, it's doing that. It's compiling those shaders for the first time. See again, bottom bottom corner, it's just doing it there. But then once once it's done it, once it's, there's a little bit of juddering as it does it. Like I say, once it's done it once, it won't need to do it again. So yeah, it's kind of into demo mode now. But yeah, that, as you can see, that, that's played quite well. So we'll just we'll close this down. We'll close that down. Uh, and the next thing we do, we'll copy some of the other games in. So <clears throat> if I come back to games here, looks like I have PS2 as well. A couple of games here, so. Again, I'll take these. I'll copy these into into the RetroBat ROMs folder. So again, the big one for PS2. And then while that's copying as well, I've got. Mario Kart for the Wii U, so we'll copy that into our RetroBat ROMs folder as well. Should be Wii U folder. And again, this is the one that uses that M3U kind of playlist. So you can tell it where to uh, where to find the games. So what I'll do, I'll just take a copy of this and we'll call it M3U. So I'll now open that with Notepad. 
So it's basically can, this, the RPX file is kind of the executable for the Wii U games. So that copy is still just running. It's a couple of gig in size. Actual game. So what we'll find is inside here, inside the code folder, Turbo RPX <clears throat> is what we're looking for. So it's in this folder here, Mario Kart 8 game code. So we go back to here. Mario Kart game and it's Turbo to RPX. Not quite sure what's Turbo, but it's down to how Nintendo named it. So basically we've got a little playlist here which tells it where to where to find the game. And there we go. Uh I'll go back here, back to Wii U. And I actually I think this needs to be called the name of the game. So Mario Kart 8 and 3U. Uh, and like I said, we had very similar for PS3. You have this text file, but you it's slightly different in here, you need to know the actual the game ID, which is a unique ID per game. Um, and you won't find that unless you look in there. Um, but what there is, is there's a handy guide on the RetroBat website. So if we go back here and go to their FAQs, frequently asked questions. Uh, there's a whole bunch here which helps you out about adding Windows games and adding some games to different systems. There's one here for PS3. So if we come down here. So it basically tells you there, yeah, so it's basically looking for um, so in, in two formats, disk format or a, a dematerialized games format, as I was talking about on this, this virtual hard drive where it installs it to. But the actual um, uh, little utility we used earlier to change RetroBat to launch um, full screen or not, we can use that to create the playlist for us rather than trying to do it manually. So in the root of the RetroBat folder, we run this back GUI. So let's go through and just run this. Follow their guide. Get rid of that. So where is it? There it is. So basically we're gonna we're gonna open up this and we're gonna do the M3U creator. So we're going to so this is the folder where the um we haven't installed. You can use the same thing for Xbox 360, but we're doing it for PS3. Now, I think what might be happening is because format I've got in, it's actually in a folder format, isn't it? So maybe we don't need to do this. Maybe this is just for the games that we installed as package files. Let me just double check this. So if we go to our demo folder, point, if I point at the actual PS3 folder where we put the game, Let's see what it does for us. Go to the afterburner. Select that one and scan. Okay, so it's, it's now found. Uh, found the game. Uh, if it doesn't pick up the game name automatically, you can type it in. So yeah, adding PS3 is a little bit fiddly. So I'll have to go to Climax and then click Generate. So that should now uh, go through, click Generate. And it should create one in that ROMs folder. Yeah, so that suggests I did it right for the Wii U because it's, there's a playlist per game, which is what I did. So let's just make sure. S3. Okay, yeah, so it's great. The Afterburner Climax.m3u file. We right click and open up a notepad to have a look. So yeah, it's basically pointing to the eboot.bin, which is in the folder, in the user folder, and under that game folder. So. 
that should be that. So now, in theory, we've done what we need to do. We can close this. Come back to emulation station. Uh, come back out of here. And we could just restart and it'll pick up the games, but we also go into the menu, go to game settings and do update game lists. So yes. Now if we go through, we've got Wii U, so we come to here. It, I think it does the scan as well, because with, with inside the Wii U uh, game folders, let's see, under Mario Kart, you've got a, a game folder, which is the main game itself, and under that code folder is the main executable. There's also uh, DLC, so the, the downloadable content, which is kind of the same structure, so it's, pick, it's going to pick up that as well. And there's also an update folder to update the game to the latest version. So basically, when if you're on a Wii U and does a patch of the game, that gets stored in here. And again, that's what code code folder. So, but basically, um, the scanner picks up that. So you just need to go and kind of get them. But we've got we've got that's one you want. It's one here. Um, so these ones, you can just hold the button down. And I think I do delete game. No, because that, that will delete the actual game file, so we don't want to do that because I actually end up deleting. Uh, so, what I can just do is make it hidden. And then this one as well, hold down the A button. Go down to edit metadata right at the bottom, hidden, save. So, now we've got Mario Kart 8. Uh, now, in theory, if I select this, with any luck, it's playing, but it's playing full screen. Uh, yeah, hope you can see that. Okay, <clears throat> it might be a little bit slow because I'm my PC is recording as well at the same time. So yeah, so I think what I might have to do is just do the input settings. Yeah, so I might need to check this outside of the game, so we can just configure the... Uh... I'm only seeing keyboard there at the moment. Here we can add... Okay, so that should have added the Xbox controllers. Let's see if that's worked. I might need to restart. Okay, it's working. Well, there's no sound because I'm not re not recording it. But that's so the Xbox controller can hear me moving about. Also, get on Nintendo, they, they reverse the uh, A and B button, don't they? Right, so it's playing. That's playing okay. So, again, this is similar to the, the PS3 emulator where occasionally you'll see compiling shaders pop up. And it might be a slight slowdown when it does that, but once it's done it for the first time, you're good to go. So yeah, that's all running fine, and it's added. You know, it's appeared in the list. Obviously, you can scrape the artwork and get all the artwork there if you need to. Or, well, you probably will want to. Um, and then, so for PS2, we've got our games in here. Um, I would, it should error now. It should error saying it hasn't got a BIOS file. There you go. So if we just say okay, no. So like I say, yeah. Um, some systems need BIOS files. But obviously, for the PS3. So Wii U didn't need it. The PS3 was the PlayStation firmware that we copied across, uh, but for PS2 it does need an actual BIOS file. And like I say, under RetroBat, 
a folder there's a bass folder where all the basses go and like i said i'll leave a link in the description where you can get get a full pack which you just dump in here um but for this i do have some bass files um and i think for the ps2 it's uh, these ones. I think the other ones are PlayStation One. Obviously, that's for the PS3. So I'll just take those. I mean, having said that, I may as well take the whole lot apart from that, so I don't need that. I'll copy those. Go to Retro Bat, BIOS, right-click, paste. So it's now I've got all the BIOS files in there. So now, in theory, when I launch this should launch without moaning and again it's going to launch full screen so you may or may not be able to see it um, yeah it's, it's launching but it's just slightly off the screen <laughs> so we'll just escape on that one uh, so what I might be able to do just to show that is actually let's do just do PS3 over here again so you can see afterburners there Uh, see, this is a bit misleading because it's saying, even though we've installed the firmware correctly, it still does a pre-check to look in here for the, the PS, that PSP file. Even though it doesn't need it in there, we've installed it already in the emulator. But just to, just to prove the point, we'll take that. Go to ret RetroPack folder, BIOS. Paste it in there. And now we we'll launch the game. It doesn't doesn't moan. Uh, there is an option to turn that off. That that kind of BIOS check, which we can have a look at. Ah, so it, it's looking for the game under the emulator folder. Which isn't quite right. So I'm not quite sure why it's done that. So we can double check it. Okay, this is what I like to do. The, I like to do the um, the videos kind of a, a little bit ad hoc. So if stuff does go wrong, we can hopefully fix it. So let's just check the M3 file. Now I'm sure there should be a leading dot there. So it's, just, so it's a relative path, so where it launches from. Let's try that. So I'm sure you compare that to playlist for the Wii U. If we have Mario Kart. Yeah, so you got that, that leading dot which basically says start from the current folder. So the current folder being being the Wii U folder under ROMs, look for a folder for Mario Kart etc. So let's just try that and see if that works. And there we go. <clears throat> can it launch full screen? Just resizing it so you can see it. And we launch. Yes, yeah, so my control is not working in there, so we'll just we'll fix that. Like I say, that's that's all the systems added, emulators added. Just a bit of tweaking now for the actual controller. Oh no! Hit the launch button again. Don't want to do that. Where's it gone? Close that off. Make sure I hit the right button this time. Right. Okay, so just to do the tweak, can I say go back to the retro back folder, come into here. So for semi we can figure the control while we're in there, that's fine, that'll work. Uh, and then for PS3. Go here, and this will see like I said before, this will just launch the emulator. With no game, so now when we're in here, we get a pad. Uh, player one, 
we'll do X input. So that should be good to go. You can see here on the analog stick as I move it around, it moves, it's registering. Uh, and I'll just click save there. So that shouldn't in theory be it. So we can now close and come out. While we're here, we can just double check. Yes, two as well. And we've got controllers. Turn on that one. We'll just try this. Uh, off the auto save where it was, handy. Just see if this works. So that is no. <laughs> so let's just see if we can get it working. Things there. So I click each one. Clicking each one of these, and as I click on the corresponding button, I hit the corresponding button on here. Right analog, up, left, right, down. Now, do I need to save, or oh, I can't remember. I'll just close that. And there we go, up and down. That's working now. Stop button. Yeah, it seems. Control all working, that's good. So, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, like I say, it should be pretty much the same for other controllers. Obviously, now I've got my. Oh, I don't want to configure the uh, controller in here. So they're all set up. Like I say, just the last thing you probably want to do is do the um, do the scraping. Let's go back in. Do the scraping. Screen scraper, as I said before, I tend to use because it this works really well. Need to type in my details. Oh, I've got a tendency to enter on the keyboard, and that's not what I need to press. Scraper settings password. Mm. 
do a quick straighten down. And you see the top corner here, it's starting to scrape. Hopefully it shouldn't take too long. I think what you might find in the Wii U, it's going to search for that, that name, that turbo name. So whether it's going to pick it up correctly, I don't know. But there's one way to find out. So I was going to leave this to run for a second. Okay, the scraping's finished, so we'll just go and check Wii U. Make sure it scraped that game correctly, because it was looking for the turbo name. Uh, there we go, it's got the artwork and the video snap too, which is good. So we'll just go and double check PS2. Again, yeah, they seem to be fine. And just stop on one for a second and we get the video snap. All looks good. And then last but not least, we'll just check PS3. And there we go, afterburner with the video snap, all good. But yeah, that's it, all ready to go now. Um, hopefully that was useful. Like I say, you know, only three emulators, but you know, I could spend ages and ages on every single emulator. But if you want to see any others, let me know. Any issues you've got, let me know. I'll, I'll, I'll either update the video or make a new video. Um, yeah, hopefully it was useful. Um, please like, please subscribe, and um, I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.